so ladies and gentlemen, as it was already mentioned, we changed completely the system, but we still have the PhD studies in our faculty, and when you look at the what already the advice been said, we still have something like let's say 160 PhD students which will follow the old system, so the PhD study which will run for the let's say tens of years at the uh, faculty. And if, if, if you look here, so it seems to be that it's quite a huge percentage of people who have continued the, the PhD studies. And also when you look at the proportion of the academic teachers and PhD students, you can see that this is a substantial part of our, let's say, faculty uh, activity. So the candidates for the PhD uh, who comes to us mostly are from our original, let's say, chemistry uh, curriculum, but we also have this uh, studies that we do together with the physics department in advanced materials and nanotechnology and small part of them are also continue here. The number of students here is limited, so the, also the small number of students coming, but still we have them here. And there is also quite recently observed the trend that more and more students are doing the chemistry PhD, uh, PhD but uh, dedicated also to some, let's say, biochemistry or some biological aspect. And it is, the real uh, trends. When we go for the admission, we are today we are finishing the admission for our PhD uh, school, but the entrance exam, which is in the middle, uh, is usually the examination with uh, in front of the commission of four professors, and you can actually choose if you want to pass the physical chemistry, and this is usually the most common. Uh, what the uh, candidates choose, and the Bible for that is the Atkins physical chemistry, so in principle they are asking that. Then people who are more oriented towards the theoretical chemistry, they pass the exam of theory, and then I would say something like one, two people per, per year which enter the theoretical, uh, let's say, path. And we also have this biochemistry, and I would say that it's something like four to eight students which are passing over 30, uh, because this is the number of places that we have each year. And what we evaluate? We evaluate the uh, recommendation from the uh, supervisor, the scientific achievement, because uh, I should mention that also our master students usually finish the master thesis with the scientific uh, paper. And, uh, and there is also the exam on uh, English. Nowadays, for the PhD school that we have, we decided that only we did a discussion on the uh, chemical, let's say, uh, subject. And the last question can be asked in English just to check if the student can follow the, the literature and to present the, the, the scientific results that they have on the conferences. And uh, after that, not the students getting their PhD status for the uh, four years. So that's how the program is organized. And most of the courses that we offer are the faculty. So it means that the student can choose whatever they want. And we are quite flexible about it. So if the student is coming and is asking that we would like to take the course in physics or in biochemistry, I usually agree on that. And uh, what we have is the numerical method, and this is quite probably the, the biggest, let's say, uh, the course that we offer them. So it's not only programming, but also how to deal with the scientific data, how to uh, present the results, to do some statistics, but also to write a short, let's say, subroutine or program for dedicated for their own uh, research. Then we still offer them the, the English, uh, we call it scientific English, but it's also for the communication. There is the philosophy, because at the end of the PhD, they are supposed to pass the exam on philosophy, since it is still the PhD, so it means a doctor in philosophy. Then there is the uh, faculty information that they can choose from the big list, and they also have to do the teaching, and the teaching is continued every each year, so they are just getting the classes with the uh, younger students. And what is important on the second year, we have something like PhD seminar, 
And this is the moment when the student is presenting, let's say, the, the mind thoughts, the main, let's say, frame of the PhD. There is already after the discussion with the supervisor, and it seems to be that on the second year everything has to be settled. And when you look here, what kind of uh, courses are offered for them? But I just selected a few. If uh, some, let's say, additional courses by uh, visiting professors are often, they are also encouraged to, to do it. But it's like uh, applied quantum chemistry, synergistic, uh, advanced methods of quantum chemistry, the world of information, elements of the solid state theory, uh, NMR, chemistry of micromolecules, bioinformatics, uh, intermolecular interaction, and, and much more. So in principle, they are supposed to pass three exams and from these facultative lectures, and really they took, if uh, the student is morally, mostly oriented towards, let's say, experiments, they took two experimental, went to theoretical, and if there is a theoretical guy, he is taking the two exams on theory and one on the uh, experimental part. So additional requirements to fulfill the, let's say, uh, each academic year is the participation in at least five scientific meetings during the year. So we have the, our national meetings, like the Polish Chemical Society, but also some visiting professors, they are offering the courses, and we want our students to have a little bit broader view on the chemistry uh, subject. So here we have the example what kind of uh, courses, or not courses, <coughs> lectures we had last year. So like porous energy materials and fundamentals to application from light to molecules on energy conversion for hydrogen production, like current program. And, but we also have the editor from Chem, uh, Medchem, and it was my, was my paper rejected. So the students are supposed to write also the, the manuscript, especially at the end of the uh, thesis. The design of photoelectrocatalyst, uh, and once upon a time, an NMR picture appeared. So as you can see, they are coming from the, let's say, broader knowledge, but then are oriented with some, let's say, scientific uh, merits. Assembly molecules of crystal, and usually, uh, if we have the, our Polish uh, chemical society, is in Polish, uh, but we, of course, the uh, uh, visitors come from abroad, then uh, the course is in, in English. So the PhD seminar, as I already mentioned, this is quite an important point. Uh, I think because this is the oral presentation and we decided that if the student wants to take the higher mark, it has to be in English. So it's a 30 minute presentation and we have the 15 minutes discussion with the colleagues actually. So they say that it's a quite a good uh, idea to just, sometimes for them it's the first uh, presentation in English. So they like to share it with the students that to mimic the discussion that they came in on the, on the conference. Then what is expected from them is the plan of the PhD project, just to, to have these ideas of what I'm going to do. And the student evaluate themselves, so it's the individual assessment. And we also invite them some, some guests here, so mostly the postdoc, they like it very much if the student, uh, if the postdoc is coming and is telling how they apply for the, for the postdoc position somewhere abroad what kind of interview he has to pass, uh, what was the say, strategy for search for a, for a good place to, to continue the scientific, uh, let's say, development. And we have also our National Scientific Center, and we invite the experts, and they are telling them how to prepare a good scientific project, what is evaluated, what, how the evaluation procedure looks like, and the students also like this kind of, of stuff. Then we evaluate them. So after each year, <laughs> the student is supposed to deliver a report. So here's the, let's say, table of activity. It's in Polish, it doesn't matter so much. I just want to point out one very important thing. So in the first place, there is a publication in the, we call it Philadelphia list, but it's the, uh, the, the list of papers which that they have impact factor. And what we do, here you can see that the impact factor is times by 15. So there was a great debate what should be the coefficient here, but we decided that if you publish the paper, for example, which is average in, in our let's say, faculty, like with, in the journal of impact factor 3, then we times 15, it means like 45, and this is right the number of points that the ministry give uh, when we uh, report our activity uh, of the whole uh, faculty. 
is a several number of different things. I just mentioned a few of them here. So it's the publication in the scientific journals, but it's also the popular science publication. The students also do that. So abstract in the book of the conference, uh, then co-authorship of the scientific book. We have the students who are also contributing to the chapters or even produce uh, their own uh, scientific uh, book. Then we have the participation in a research project because most often we are opening the position for the student in the project so they have to apply. Uh, we have sometimes like three, four students apply for the one position. So we think that if the student is able to get it, it also means something. Then there is a more and more stress in Poland to do the more applied uh, work. So we also underline the patent applications, as was already mentioned in the big presentation. And some students also help, uh, help us to uh, organize the conferences, so the participation in the organizing committee is also a key. So th this, I think, is our uh, essential, uh, let's say, uh, points for evaluation. And for the report, and I will other other line that this one is the most important and the most point that the student get is from these uh, scientific uh, papers. Then, at the third year of the study, the student is supposed to open the let's say official procedure for accomplishment of the of the PhD. So the the, the research proposal for the PhD project is accepted by the uh, faculty and what is required that at least one scientific paper has to be published with the impact factor. So without that, we are not opening this procedure. And the student has to, at this level, also decide what kind of uh, scientific thesis he's going to, to prepare, the PhD thesis. And at the moment, in Poland, we have two possibilities, two ways. So one is the traditional dissertation, usually something like, let's say, 150 pages, like a book. But it's more and more popular now, and it's other countries in, on the West, that they, it can be also the collection of papers. And this is quite important because if you want to do the collection of papers and you have to discuss with the supervisor to be the beginning or the first author or the corresponding author and your contribution is also important because when you are submitting the thesis with a bunch of papers then you have to state your contribution to each of the papers and also ask your co-authors. But should you compulsory have I mean, the paper without any co-authors? No, 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 no. It is not necessary. No, no, no. It's very rare. In our case, it's, it's important to have at least two, three without gold. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. We had a discussion on that, but we say that it will maybe stop a little bit the cooperation between people. So we decided. Well, so some that cases, you know, it could be just mentioned. Yes, of course, we have some contribution to that paper, but uh, it is so serious. Yes, so but I, I, I would say that the regulars. You know, Mm -hmm. The requirement that at least one, two should be without any mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Thank you. But it's very difficult. Uh, first of all, we are, let's say, for the let's say, quality of the paper. So if you want to publish in the good journals, then you need to get some support from other, let's say, experimental techniques like, you know, the, for example, team observation, I mean, transfer from microscopy, or you do some calculation with the people from theory. So they are contributing. And this is quite difficult for the, for the PhD student to, to prepare the, the thesis. However, I would say that when I am evaluating this, I think that it was only one example that I see for this, you know, hundreds of papers that the student was able to prepare. Okay, yes. With the supervisor, that's, uh, that's uh, maybe more often that there are two authors. So it's the PhD student and the yes, supervisor. supervisor. Yes. Yes. So that's, that's, that's okay. That's okay. But I also, when I am looking at the evaluation reports, like the regular, so we have two regulars usually for the for the thesis. They are external from different institutions, and they usually pay attention how the collection of papers looks like. So if you are not the first author, then you are asking for trouble. So it's always better to to have it like that. And the smallest amount of papers I found was free. But uh, most often it's something like six, seven, I would say. But also, you know, people sometimes are doing more than ten. So this is also maybe not common, but but it happens. And uh, so the thesis is evaluated by two reviewers, and the final exam is again English. It's philosophy or economy. 
uh, in our faculty is tradition that we are doing in philosophy, and there is a subject that we are doing in the grade, so it means the chemistry. And at the end, something pleasure that all the students like is the public. That when the family is coming here, this is a nice discussion. And also with the with the regulars, so that uh, they also present the evaluation of, of the tests. So this is a kind of the statistics of the scientific papers that people uh, prepare. So at the first year, usually they have none, but as you can see on the second year student, so more than half of the students usually have the, the paper on that. On the third year, it's, let's say, 0.8 a students, so it's almost everyone. But in the fourth year, of course, when the, the, the project is growing, there is something like two papers per year that the student present. So as you can see, so the average, I would say that it's something like four papers per, per uh, year. So this is every night, because we say that the, every year, the student should be able to present at least this kind of data that is publishable. It is it per year or it is a cumulative? Per year, per year, per year. Per year. Per year. Yes, it's per year. It's per year. On each year, so it's on the second year, on the third year, and on the fourth year of the PhD studies. I should also say that it's very rarely that the student finish the thesis within the four years, which I did prolong it for the, for the fifth year. Mm -hmm. But there is no scholarship. For, for full-time doctoral students or part-time? Yes, for, for full-time, full -time, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Then when you look on the scientific uh, conferences, it's the same so the, on the second year, on the third, and the, on the fourth year. So you can see that the orals, so half of them is presenting, and this is not changing over the uh, year. Then there's a little bit better with the posters, and so usually the students are taking part in the two and a half conference per year, and this is, I think, uh, quite quite okay. So, and most of the conferences are international. Is it necessary for them to participate in the conferences as a part of education or oh, no, no, no. It's not, sorry? No, no. It's not a part of education, no, but this list is actually the official one. So we <laughs> present it on the faculty council because it's the kind of the, let's say, evaluation of the students, so the best PhD students and the number of papers that they produce. Wow. So you can see that we have the student on the fifth year, for example, yes. Daniel was presented the 19th, but this is really exceptional. So, so you can see that there is a big gap. But when you look at the, let's say, four years, so something like seven seven papers, this is something that is required for us. And quite a lot of presentation. And Usually it depends if the student is coming to the scientific group and the group is running a big project so then you are automatically yeah, involved in the project the and, and this, this is the case of the student. However, that guy is the theoretician one. So they say that it's maybe a little bit easier for them also to, to publish because they don't spend you know, hours in the, in the labs running the, the equipment. So there is no science without scientific support. So I would like to show you how it looks like in our faculty. So on the first year, the student is getting something like, let's say, 1,500 Polish uh, And then when he's passing to the second year, we increase it by the 100. And now, because as already the dean said, that we have the kind of the revolution, so we are changing the scientific support for the students and also uh, the students which are not involved in this uh, school, which is a uh, new, let's say, project, but uh, also the old students, they will also, all of them will have something like, let's say, 2,000, which is uh, like 500 euro, isn't it? Something like that. So, so and, and this, this, I think that this amount you can survive in track of. I don't know what the kids say, but it's a reasonable. And everybody has uh, doctoral scholarship? Yes, so everybody has this basic, we call it basic scholarship, because then when you look at it, these people who uh, are, let's say, in the 30% of the best students, they have some additional, they call it for So this money comes from government, state money? Yes. Yes. Okay. yes. 
As, a, as you can see, so the good student, you have that one plus that one, yeah. and then yeah. if you are in the, let's say, TED, you can yeah. also yeah. have the rectors. So in total, some of them are really satisfied because if you just add all these things, so you are almost approaching the professor. So it's a scholarship per month or a year? Per month. Per month. Per month. Per month. Per month. That's okay. <laughs> but what is, what is also important that with this, let's say, basic uh, doctoral scholarship that they have, they can also apply for some scientific money. So, for example, you have these Polish National Scientific Centers, and they offer particular projects for the uh, students who are doing the PhD, and you have two types of them. So, one is the, they call it preludium. And the PhD student is a principal investigator. Depends how long you plan to do the research with his PhD, then you can have different kind of, of uh, sectors. But you know, here is all the possibilities to go for the conferences, also to ask for some, uh, let's say, additional stash or external. Uh, Experiments. Now, so here's what, what it can be uh, paid for. But the, let's say also the experience uh, give us the let's say thoughts that mostly the student on the last stage of the PhD they are applied. So most of the projects are for one or two many years only. And the um, second possibility, which is dedicated for the uh, PhD candidate, so usually it's on the fourth or even fifth years. So it's just to leave up a little bit the let's say level of the PhD. You can apply for the uh, stage in a uh, good place uh, abroad, and uh, you get the very nice scholarship plus additional let's say money for the stage. What is important that the place the uh, the let's say international lab is also evaluated, the host is evaluated and the scientific achievement. So the number of papers that the uh, student uh, get during the PhD. So that's why usually the students on the last two years apply for the and of course they have also the doctoral society uh, where they apply for the small, let's say, support when they have the acceptance for the conference to, and the orals are of course uh, preferential for that. But as you can see that there can be some, some, uh, some money also involved and in the, in the year before edition of these uh, competitions are organized, but some of the students are already uh, applying. Uh, for them. And uh, tell you the truth, it's uh, most of the students from other faculty apply for this exter uh, external money. And uh, most of the students, when they are finishing, they get this kind of, of project. And I think that is the, with this financial stuff, is the end of the presentation. I don't know, but we will have some opportunity to discuss yes, 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 yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sometimes for questions, please. Yes. Uh -huh. I will ask you all my questions later, perhaps, now break because I have a lot of patients. But yeah. I think that it will be interesting for everybody who are in this uh, question uh, about uh, how many drop out students, uh, what is the dynamic of incoming students, uh, what is the dynamic of attractiveness of doctoral study. Mm -hmm. Please, could you uh, say some words mm -hmm. about this? So the average number of places that we are offering is 30 per year. Mm -hmm. okay. And the number of candidates is something like, let's say, 1.25 to 1.5 per mm -hmm. place. place. So it's not a lot of them, but telling the truth, when we are having the, let's say, evaluation after the entrance exam, we are not taking all of them. Sometimes mm -hmm. we have 30 places, but it is something like, let's say, 28 or 26 people uh, accepted. And with the former dean, which is with us, sometimes we have a discussion because if someone was also, you know, uh, below the level, and this person, let's say, has some abilities, I mean, a good, let's say, average from the, the chemistry curriculum, then we also sometimes promote them, you know, and, and accept them. So we are quite flexible in this uh, aspect. 
But uh, now I think that uh, this year we changed for the PhD school, but it was 22 places and were 28 candidates. And today the discussion how many of them will be accepted. They are telling something that will be not the full, let's say, 20 people. And do you expect they, they will be all successful? So you get something like 90% of them. 90% of the team. Which is completely opposite to that what is going in humanistic faculties. <laughs> they have 10%. And uh, the you know about scholarships and, uh, and other grant uh, funding. Uh, it is, uh, of course, I think that it is available for all students, but how uh, many percent, how many percent uh, get it. really receive? Mm -hmm. So, for example, you this on, this, on, this, uh, on this program dedicated for the PhD, so at the level of, the, let's say, uh, Poland, uh, the success rate is something like 20%, but from our faculty, more than 50%. So, we are quite happy with that. So okay, quite thank you. And you told us about the that you discussed also with teaching. Teaching. Oh. teaching students. Teaching students. Yes. And, uh, so what we do, are uh, they ready to teach students so they have uh, some special uh, base for teaching, pedagogical, psychological methods of teaching? Mm, yes, some of them have during the, let's say, master course, but mm -hmm. we offer them here also during the... Oh, this is the great problem for our uh, doctoral supervisor. Mm -hmm. The pedagogical, psychological support so what they have here is the, uh, let's say, academic education. And usually, usually what they do is like that, that there's a, uh, yes, but it's like that, that, the, uh, that the, I think that here's also they can choose the selected aspect of academic education in our, let's say, private uh, faculty or department. But what is important that during the first years, usually they do it under the supervision or the, let's say, mature, the professor. So, for example, you know, you are running the lab and you are taking the PhD student to help you to organize the laboratory class, and then you leave the student for the next year here. Okay. Okay. okay uh, dear partners, I have some doubts in this uh, approach because uh, for a treating body to become a doctor, you need uh, five, six years, and to take some uh, things with brains to teach students, you need uh, uh, only. Uh, Thirty hours. Uh, this uh, is the problem. This yes, is a great problem. Yes, it can be, but it's really like that. We call it also the assistantship. So sometimes you know you need the person in the lab just to take care of the equipment, you know, to supervise the student. Not only the teaching, to, to, they are not lecturing, you know, they are not lect lecturing, but they, they are helping quite a lot. Seminar. Yes. 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 I mean, this is what about the research part? Is it evaluated by credits or not? No. And you, no. So this is the this is the scientific let's say table that I showed you. Know? Yeah. And this is every year we evaluate the scientific let's say HR. I see. You are but evaluating uh, don't using say CTS credits. No. Just using this some other for the education of the Okay. But the scientific evaluation is important in terms of the ranking list and of the managing Yeah, of course. Because if, if we evaluate, say, formally uh, your research part by ECTS credits, because duration is four years, full four years, it means 240 credits. 60 credits per, per year, if you are talking about this But not, not, not in the PhD level. No, no, I, yeah. I see. Uh, that's yeah, why yeah, I'm talking normal. just yeah. okay. theoretically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it means that uh, educational part, study part, it is only 40 from, I mean, 240. Others left for 200. They are so. Yeah. so the yeah, right. mo more it is, I mean, focused on research than in education. Absolutely. This yeah. is the yeah. Okay, thank you. So I think that we continue discussion. Because it is more low. Low. <laughs> the low. It is, it's it is. Low. Okay, <laughs> thank you again, our speaker. Thank you.